Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Our text for our meditation this morning is taken from 1 John chapter 5, verses 5 through 12. Who is he that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. It is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater, because it is the testimony of God which He has given about His Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about His Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. So far our text. Dear Christian friends, In our early Bible study, we've been going through the book, Joining Jesus on His Mission. So far, I've been very impressed with it as it encourages people to witness their faith and how it breaks it down into very simple steps to do. Your witness is just the facts. Just seeing what has happened to you, what you say, what you read, what you believe. That's it. Well, If you look at the concept of a witness, where do we usually find witnesses? Usually it's a crime scene, or in this case, a courtroom. And the witnesses are powerful ones. These are not the usual people that you'd see on a stand. John raises up for you three witnesses. The water, the blood, and the Holy Spirit. Now my fellow members of the jury, as your foreman, I will lead you into God's Word and we'll sort all this out. And we'll come away with a verdict. From God. We continue our series of resurrection reality. And the reality this week is, of course, that you do overcome the world. And sometimes it doesn't look like it. But let's take you to a crime scene just to kind of set the stage. I think it's helpful just to kind of lay it out for you. Two children come in sobbing to the teacher. Billy and Susie are both crying. They say that each of the other person push them to the ground, and they have the marks on their elbows to prove it. And they each say that the other one is lying. Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And you might say, well, that's nice. The so what of it all that makes this kind of a big deal and urgent is the last verse, verse 12. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. This is eternal life. We're talking about heaven here. That's why this kind of matters. John's letters in his gospel are very simple in their words, but they're incredibly deep in meaning. Now, I know what it means for my favorite team to overcome their opponent on Sunday. It happens all the time with the Minnesota Vikings. I know what it means, unfortunately, to overcome an IRS audit. It's not that fun. And uh, if you walk into a school, it's testing week at a lot of the schools, whether it be high schools, even end-of-grade tests. I think those start in third grade. And you'll see posters on the wall that say, beat the test. You got this. Some schools even hire hype-stuffed animals to get the kids excited for the test, which always seems a little odd to me. I encourage my kids, God has blessed you with gifts. Use them to His glory. And they have, and I'm proud of them. So, that's one way to overcome. But i got to say, how many of you saw this picture? This is, I think, three days ago. This is the Lambert family. Um, the boy looks a little rough because he was sucked out of his mom arm, mom's arms and chucked 25 feet in rubble by a tornado. And he didn't die. It's amazing, right? They're from Hawley, Texas. Storm chasers that were watching it all go down ran in after the tornado took off and rescued these people from the rubble. 7,000 homes were destroyed in that line. Um, that's uh, $2.1 billion in losses just from this most recent bout. It's been a rough spring. Well, how did these people overcome the world? How can you overcome the world when the ends will not meet, no matter what you do to your budget? 
How do you overcome the world when the relationships in your life are crumbling? Why can marriages not always be a joy? Why do my friends treat me this way? I even got to the sin that sticks to your soul. The wrong things that you do to your friends. Someone compared it to sweet tea or lemonade that you dump on the floor. And no matter how many times you wipe that off, it's still sticky. What can you do to make it go away? And the real problem is that if you don't get unsticky, your destination is not heaven. Hell is real. Verse 12, He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Well, we really want to overcome the world. And the only way we can do this is by believing that Jesus is God's Son. Listen to what these witnesses have to say. This is verse 6. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. It is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify. The Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. Now those three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, will all get addressed here. But I want to take the last one first. This is the Holy Spirit. We're going to spend a whole lot of time on the Holy Spirit over, well, on Pentecost and Trinity is... Two Sundays away and three Sundays away. We're going to get a lot of play with him. But the Spirit is the one who convinces you. This is 2 Timothy. From infancy, you have known the Holy Scriptures that are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. The disciples are walking with the weight of the world in their shoulders. How is it that they could go forward, guilt and all, and start a new church that would go around the world? It's not because they were so wonderful. It's because God went with them. He is the one who convicts the world of sin, and He's the one who convinces the world of forgiveness. And it's great to talk about the world, but start with it in your own heart. Where is that sticky lemonade? What is it that you just can't get rid of? Because no matter what you do, that guilt won't go away. You leave it, to Jesus. You leave it at the foot of the cross and He pays for it. His death is sufficient for all the sins of the world and again, more importantly, the ones in your soul. He is the one who takes your guilt and leaves you with peace. He takes your sin and leaves you with forgiveness. He takes hopelessness and He not only gives you hope, He gives you joy. That's the life of the Christian And it's incredible. Verse 13, But when He comes, the Spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all truth. That was the Gospel lesson. We will spend more time again in the the weeks to come. But the Spirit is the witness who changes hearts and goes with my words that I speak to you. But let's get to the legal case at hand. Billy and Susie playing were on the playground again. And so what do you do? You ask Timmy, who's swinging, or some other children. So also, let's check it out. In the Old Testament, they said, let the matter be established by three witnesses. And so a lot of people think that's what the Apostle John is doing as he lists the water, the blood, and the Spirit. Well, verse 6, this is the one who came by water and the blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. Now, if you're thinking this is the least Clear reference I've heard in a while from the Bible. I get it. Yeah, this is a confusing one. If you only had this letter and you walked away with this, you'd be like, I don't know what God's doing here. I got nothing. Well, what do you do when you come across a word of Scripture that is a little confusing? You let the clear passages of Scripture interpret the unclear ones. Where else do we see this? In the Bible. And that's what we're going to see. And the first one, there's three examples. They all could work. They all get you to the same place. The first one is from the Gospel of John. This is 19. We're standing at the foot of the cross with, the God, with John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. This is verse 34. Instead, of, instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given his testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. 
John was an eyewitness of Jesus' death. And when that soldier came by and said, I wonder if he's really dead, wham! Shoved that spear in there. He had been dead long enough that the water and the plasma had separated and came out. Jesus was really dead. Now, this is a big deal because there are certain groups of people, LDS, the Mormons, and the Jehovah's Witnesses, deny that God died. That's kind of a deal breaker, as you saw in the last verse. Well, if you go with what they teach, that would make God out to be a liar, number one. And number two, Jesus' death could not have covered the sins of the world. And I really need that, because I'm in the world. So that's the first one. We're talking about his death, and Jesus really died. The second one, well, we're talking about water and blood, and as you look around this church and as we celebrate certain things when we worship our God, there's a baptismal font in the back. If we need to baptize someone, we put water in it. On the second and fourth Sundays of the month, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. In it, we receive Jesus' body and blood. Could the Apostle John be talking about those two sacraments? Baptism, where Titus says it's a washing of rebirth and renewal. All of your sins are washed away, as Peter says. It's beautiful. In the Lord's Supper, we taste and see how good our God is. We know that that forgiveness, that body was given, that blood was shed for you and for no one else. It's a very intimate thing when God comes to you in the Lord's Supper. Some people have compared me saying, you're forgiven, to a high five. In the Lord's Supper, it's like a hug. Jesus says, bring it in. I love you. You're forgiven. All right? That's the second one. The third, and I like this one. You can go back to Jesus' baptism. That'd be the water. That's kind of a bookend. We talked about this as we go through the Epiphany season. That started his ministry of three years where he lived a perfect life so he could die the perfect death in your place, and that would be the blood. So when you need a witness and you need, how do I know that Jesus forgave my sins? Look at his whole ministry. See the water and the blood and everything in between. The start of the baptism, the end of his death, and you know that everything is finished. That was his cry from the cross. You overcome the world because of the work that Jesus did. And it's amazing. And relationships are a two-way street. So as you overcome the world, remember, you can't control what other people do to you. You can't. But you can control how you react. And God gives you the license, yes, the power, that you can forgive people so you don't have to respond in kind. And the world is overcome. Now, play that out a little bit. You just had your child sucked out of your arms. I know Mother's Day is next Sunday. But when you listen to Casey Lambert talk about that, she's terrified. I can't imagine that. Seeing your child go whisked out of your arms and she thought he was dead. He doesn't look good, does he? A little beat up, but God preserved his life. God be praised. Not everyone did. We're going to talk about um, the officers, the marshals, and the policemen who were killed in Charlotte. We're going to offer a prayer with their families. Four died this week. It's heartbreaking. Six others were injured. There are public servants who work to defend our communities. And I praise God for them. We, we should ask for God's blessing and protection on them as they serve Him. Dear friends, I should probably tell you how the tiff on the playground ended, right? Between Susie and Billy. Timmy said that Susie was lying. She started the whole thing. And she jumped on the ground and hurt her own elbows. It's kind of pathological. But that's how that ended. You know how the story ends with Jesus. You know that he's God's son. And if there's anyone who questions it, read the Gospels. Because the Spirit convinces you of who Jesus is. The Lamb of God who's taken away the sins of the world. That is how we overcome. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding